Hello everyone and welcome to prompt number 114. Let's just get into it. We have, oh, we've got three. We've got horse and carriage, banana peel, and stapler. Wow, that is quite, quite a variety. All right, here we go. Now, when I said that was quite a variety, I think what I meant to say was this is a cluster f of a prompt because what the heck, I had such a problem sketching this. I just couldn't come up with any ideas. Wow. I mean, I guess you will see. I don't need to explain myself. So what I started off with was a horse-drawn carriage, obviously pulling a banana stand. Um, but again, I forgot the stapler and I just wasn't sure what to do about that. So I turned the horse into a banana peel. I turned the horse into a stapler. Then I shrunk the horse and tried to make some sort of little people sort of situation where there's like a giant banana peel and an apple and a tiny horse pulling a stapler carriage. Then I threw an ant on it because when I don't know what to draw, I throw ants on things. It was really calling out for some sort of miniature situation. I don't know, I tried to make a banana carriage with a horse. Things were not looking good and I was worried, I was scared. <laughs> So I don't know how long a lot of you have been around on my channel, or at least how long some of you have been watching the prompt series. This isn't an official rule to my prompt series, but it used to be that I would challenge myself to sit down, record the sketching of the prompt, and then have to record that drawing either that day or the next day. I didn't want to give myself a week or any extra sort of time to come up with ideas because I wanted to challenge myself to come up with these ideas on the spot. But the problem there is that I was coming up with really rushed, bad ideas, or I just wasn't giving myself enough time to come up with good ideas. And I don't think there's anything wrong with giving myself extra time because especially when you're ending up with results you don't like, and I don't want to sit here and complain in every single video that I don't like my illustration. And something I've noticed recently, especially recently, is that I'm really giving myself a lot of time to just sit down and pencil these drawings at my leisure. Sometimes I don't record the whole process because that way I'm not pressured to rush it for the recording and I've really noticed lately that I've been liking a lot of my illustrations lately because I'm giving myself more time to either work on the drawing itself or to give myself more time to think of the idea. All of that said and rant, I sat on the idea on this illustration for several days. I think I recorded the intro for this one last Tuesday and I didn't actually start penciling it until Sunday. So I almost gave myself a whole week thinking what the heck I'm going to do with horse and carriage, banana peel and stapler. So after I did my initial sketching, and obviously already you can see what I'm doing, I was thinking about doing some sort of a trash princess where there could be a trash can horse-drawn carriage and she could be wearing a banana peel dress and then there could be various garbage laying around her or coming out of the trash can and the stapler could be with it. I was actually pretty pumped about that idea. I wasn't against it. I was kind of looking forward to it, but then I came up with, I don't remember exactly the timeline of this illustration because I have to say, this was probably the most challenging set of prompts we've had yet. I mean, this, this was hard. <laughs> And I think the fact that I did give myself so much time to think it over and then also pencil it as slowly as I needed, I think that really added to me liking it. I mean, obviously, you know, giving yourself time to work on something. And I do want to be an artist that can work fast and on the spot. And that's definitely a skill I want to work on. And the prompts are definitely helping me with come up with ideas and working quickly. But y'all, I like it when I like my art. <laughs> I'm sure you guys like it too. I'm sure you can tell I've been a lot more happier in these videos lately when I do like the art. You know, you can only have so many videos where you don't like your art, right? Jeez Louise, we haven't even talked about the current idea. I just keep rambling. Something I was thinking about was my isometric rooms. So we have a banana peel and a stapler, which makes me think of an office because obviously a stapler who owns staplers. I mean, I don't, but when I think of a stapler, I think of an office. And then a banana peel, I don't know, you, you go to work and you eat a banana. They're very handy to carry. But the horse and carriage was what was really throwing me off. It was just like, 
I guess I could have put a horse and carriage and a snow globe on the office desk or something, a poster. I mean, there's so many things you can do. It doesn't have to be an actual horse drawn carriage. But I was thinking, what if I made the office the horse drawn carriage? What if I turned one of my little isometric grooms into something that was portable? So I came up with the idea of a porta cube which my lovely husband Dave came up and said that sounded like something you poop in. And I said, well, yeah, I was playing off of the words porta john or porta potty because it's a portable cubicle. So porta cube, I thought it was kind of cute. I'm not really, not really pitching an actual thing, Dave. I'm calling you out in this video. So anyways, I just thought it would be really silly to have a horse drawn cubicle and I don't know, I have mixed feelings about this illustration. I I really think it's cute, I think it's funny. There's a lot that I like about it, but I think there's parts of it that I just feel like don't really go along together. Especially something to do with the horse area, I'm just not really keen about and I don't know what it is. Oh heck, I just realized I didn't add all of the wood texture with my pen. The wall on the left side doesn't have any wood texture and I meant to go back and add some and I didn't so it's kind of plain looking. Anyways, so let's talk about this illustration. I feel like I've been rambling about so many things. Okay, so we have our porta cube and going into this I was originally going to sketch a human inside the porta cube just because it was a horse drawn carriage. Usually humans ride horses. Okay, I, I like the idea of having animal characters, like anthropomorphic animal characters, but then also there being like a pet dog, or in this case, horses that you can ride and do things. It's like Arthur and I don't know, Pe Peppa Pig, and just literally any sort of children's media where the characters are animals. They always have a pet dog or like a fish or something that makes you go, hmm, are they slaves? What's happening here? So I'm definitely embracing that with this illustration. I mean, let's just talk about how the fact that a porta cube is not something that would ever exist ever. I mean, do you see the papers flying away in the back? This looks like a disaster. Like you, you don't want, this is not a realistic illustration. Most of my illustrations are not realistic. I feel like I just keep rambling in this video. Okay, so we have this old man who works and I don't know, he he needs a porta cube because his job's like making him move or something, I don't know. But also it's bring your kids to work day. So we have these three bear cubs that are just wrecking havoc on this poor guy's office. And to top it all off, they only had women's porta cubes. Ugh, so everything's pink, ew. This old man is, he's old fashioned. So he's not super into the whole pink and heart thing. I mean, I can't blame him. I don't like purple. I would be kind of annoyed if I had to work inside of a purple porta cube. So he is taking a little coffee break and sitting on the edge of his cubicle while his kids or grandkids, I made him quite old. They are just wrecking havoc. We have a bear hopping on the back of one of the horses, which is making them go crazy. They do not like this little bear cub being on their butt taking a nap under the keyboard and then one who has dropped some ink and stepped in it, drug it all over the place. Actually, fun fact about the ink bear, he was not originally going to be ink and the ink was not actually planned at all. In fact, I completely messed up inking his little mouth part. So there was this huge, big, fat black line going around his little nose mouth part. And so I was like, well, I'll just turn that into an ink splotch, you know, embrace your accidents. So I just drug ink all over the place. And like, honestly, I'm quite happy that I did that because I like it. I think it's cute, adds little black blotches everywhere, adds more mess, I love it. And the last detail that I added to this illustration when it came to penciling was the background. I wanted this to be a full background situation and I really didn't want it to be too distracting from our porta cube because that was the main, main thing. But I needed a sidewalk. I thought it would be interesting to have other animals walking around on the sidewalk. And I didn't want the animals to be too detailed. So there's very minimal shading on these characters and I left them all white and gray because after I painted the background, I did the ground, the street's gray, the sidewalk is gray, the grass is green, which I did put a little bit inside of the porta cube, but just a little bit. And on the horses, by the way, the horses are all dolled up. Their tails and mane are all cute looking because this is the more girly porta cube, the princess style porta cube. 
what was I talking about? I didn't want the characters or anything in the background to be too distracting. I wanted it to be a little bit more on the simple side because the Porta Cube had so much detail already anyways. So I did my best to really limit the color palette outside of the Porta Cube to be gray, green, and red. So we have the red of everyone's mouths and ears, the gray and the white of their fur, and then the green for the grass and the horse's decorative stuff. So yeah, overall, honestly, I know there are some issues with perspective. This is another isometric situation. So there is no vanishing point. This is like a fixed perspective. And again, staplers on the desk, banana peel is next to the trash can and our horse-drawn carriage is the main event. There's always someone in the comments that think I forgot a prompt. On record, you guys, I've never ever forgot a prompt. The prompt is always there. Sometimes you just kind of have to look for it. That's fine. Overall, I quite like this illustration. It kind of reminds me of my ant illustrations where there's just so much little things happening. It's a fixed perspective and I kind of want to do more like this where it's like a little animal city with weird things happening. My favorite part of this illustration is probably the stack of papers flying away. I just really like the contrast of white papers on that dark gray street. And I just think it's kind of funny. Like why would you have a porta cube? It's just the stupidest situation. Things are just flying everywhere. I'm sure every little bump in the ground is going to make your coffee go flying. It's just not a good, also who is controlling the horses? Like do the horses know what they're doing? Maybe they do talk, maybe they, Maybe it's just their job to, well, I never, hmm. I did not think that one through. This is actually becoming more funny of an illustration. Anyways, I have just rambled far too long. This video is ending up way longer than I anticipated. I hope you guys enjoyed me just rambling on about who the heck knows what. I'll see you in the end card. Last week's prompt was Swamp Creature and I just loved how in general, how green my folder was for all these illustrations. It was really fun, but also the variety in the different creatures that you all came up with and created. It was just, it was a blast. I loved looking through this prompt. But our first featured artist is Miss Nerdy who created this really lovely illustration where everything is pink on the outside and the swamp creature and everything to do with the swamp creature is green. This adorable bathroom and this adorable girl walking in, by the way, her bathroom is labeled her name, which I find too funny. I love it. It's just so cute. I love this little scene and the girl in the reflection of the mirror, love it. And Lad Snarts, who created this lovely onion creature. I just love it. It just looks all smoggy. I love the purple around the creature. I know, weird, right? I love how lanky it is. It's butt, it's boobs, it's got weird hair. Things are growing off of it. I love the face. This little guy is so cute. It's simple yet effective. Just overall a fun creature design and I love it. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining in. Good luck with these three prompts. It's a doozy, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.